When we experience trauma and stress, the chemistry and makeup of our brain actually changes. But this change isn't always permanent. Well, joining us now via Zoom is psychiatrist and brain health expert, friend of the show, Dr. Daniel Amen. Welcome back to the show, Doc. So nice to see you. I am so, this is just such an important topic to talk about. It, it really is. And this is why we are going to the source. All right, so let's talk about the adolescent brain. What happens to kids when they experience stress? Well, what a lot of people don't realize is your brain is not finished developing until you're about 25. And so the brain is undergoing wild development. And so stress, especially things like pandemic stress, can literally change the trajectory, the brain health of these kids for the rest of their lives. Dr. Amen, let's take a look at a scan of a stressed brain versus a healthy brain and explain to us where we see the difference. So if we look at the image on the right, the blue is average activity in the brain and red is the top 15%, white is the top 8%. So right in the middle of the scan, you see these two big white areas. That's sort of the anxiety centers of the brain. And when they work too hard, that's what the white means. People are anxious, tense, nervous. They're sort of always looking around for something bad to happen. And chronic exposure to stress hormones puts fat on your belly, damages an area called the hippocampus, which is involved with mood and memory, make you more vulnerable to infections. And soon you end up at the doctor and you go, I'm anxious, and you end up on medication, and the medication can change your brain. So really taking a preventive approach to this is so important. That being said, what can parents do to care for their child's brain? So I actually have a course called Brain Thrive by 25. It's been taught all over the world. We teach kids to love and care for their brain. So the first thing for parents to do is you have to model brain health, uh, which is three things. Love your brain like really think about it, uh, avoid things that hurt it, drugs, alcohol, marijuana is not good for the developing brain, uh, and then do things that help it, exercise, sleep. And one of my favorite things, these little tiny habits every day, start the day with today is going to be a great day. End the day with what went well today. So parents at breakfast, you can go, hey, why is today gonna be a great day for you? just to nudge their mind to a positive way, which decreases stress. And at dinner time or before bed, go, what went well today? Again, it's just nudging your mind to look for what's right rather than what's wrong. So actually what you're saying is that positive thinking is, is medicine for, for the brain in a way. There's no question where what you think about determines how you feel, where you focus determines how you feel. And given we've been trained in the last two years to look for look at death tolls, look at negativity, political divide, and that's damaging us. Let's focus on what's right, not just what's wrong. I love it. And it makes sense. It makes perfectly clear sense. Be nice to your brain. Treat your brain well and uh, you're more likely to thrive.